Hello, this is Mark Witten. I'm the voice of Alex in Street Fighter V, and you are listening to Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. You can't escape! The Casanova Podcast, the number one podcast in Hawaii, is brought to you by these contributors on Patreon. If you'd like to see more content like this more often, as well as more podcasts, reviews, impressions, early access releases, live streams, and original content, then consider becoming a patron today. All right, and welcome everyone to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast, The Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova, and I'm coming at you with another phenomenal interview. And in today's episode, I have the honor and privilege of interviewing Henry Choi of Top Tier GG. Henry, go ahead and introduce yourself, man. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Henry. Uh, some people know me as Choi Sauce, uh, and I'm helping to run uh, Top Tier uh, We're a brand new site. Uh, we're very focused on like information, so like we want to get out, especially event information, like for locals and majors. And uh, we're also doing a little bit of news here and there. Um, I run it with my partner, who is uh, Gabriel Arteaga. Uh, he uh, so back in the day, he's been he's known as Thrill House, <laughs> so some people might remember him. He had some sick Ibuki play back in SF4 days. Um, but yeah, both of us are running the site. And uh, yeah, we're just trying to do our best to you know, get some good info out to the FGC and just especially with like locals and stuff, because uh, I'm, I'm really big on that. And because mm-hmm. you know, uh, like for me, it was kind of like a kind of a life changing experience for me for like going to like fighting game locals. And, and it was just a big benefit for me. So I feel like I want to kind of give back by making that accessible for people. Definitely, definitely. Um, go ahead and um, plug the social media and the website and everywhere where people can find you and any uh, upcoming events, projects that you guys are working on. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you can find us. Uh, we mainly post on Twitter uh, and on Facebook. Uh, and then, like, so you could just find us at, like, you know, twitter.com slash top tier GG, no dot there. And same thing with Facebook. Um, and also, just, you know, visit the website at toptier.gg, so you can mm. just check out what we got there. Cool, cool, cool. And um, you mind, like, giving a background, uh, more of a background, I know we, we kind of glanced over it at the beginning of the podcast, but, you know, more of a background on yourself and Top Tier GG, like, when was it founded? Uh, like, what year and what, what was the idea behind it um, that separates you guys from other uh, event uh, websites? Uh, well. I think we launched like this past like February or so, mm-hmm. so it's pretty brand new. Um, and like, I think like, what is that? It kind of sparked the idea for me a little bit from just uh, like I remember that. Uh, do you know uh, what was the guy's name? The the, the Abigail player. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't think of his name. From, from the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I know his like Twitter's like Redmond or something like that, but yeah. uh, the cool kid. No, no, it's the cool kid. Yeah, <laughs> cool kid. Yes, I remember now. I have bad memories, but I remember he had this whole Twitter rant about like, oh, you know, um, like nobody pays attention to the mid, you know, where I'm from. It's always about East yeah. Coast, West Coast, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's like kind of it's like that, huh? It's like next level or like Wednesday night fights all the time. Yeah, like they get they get a lot of spotlight, you know. But you know, they do great job so it's like it's well deserved but mm-hmm. kind of felt like yeah you know it's like there's so many locals and so many different pl- things out there and it's like i've never heard of any other place besides those two so like i thought you know we need to highlight all these other places that are kind of unknown and give them a way to like shine and like and, and on the top of that like uh another factor was you know a lot of the times uh, i see people kind of tweet james chen like, hey, James, can you help me find a local from this area? And it just becomes just a retweet, you know? And it's mm-hmm. just like, hey, hey, does anybody know one? Does anybody know one? So it's like, I figure, you know, we could be like a, there should be a tool to help with that, you know? And mm-hmm. before that, I think there was just like, um, 
Google spreadsheets, you know, like 50 pages yeah. long. And it's like, how am I going to find one <laughs> here? It's like, it's so hard, you know? So, you know, that's kind of like what was the catalyst for, for starting the site. You know, we felt like, you know, it's hard for people to kind of look for in all these disparate locations and yeah. oh you have to know this twitter account it's like you know imagine if someone just starts you know twitter day zero and then, and then i want to look into the fgc who the heck do i follow and then it's like it's going to take them like a couple of months before they even figure out where to go <laughs> you know so we want to be that site to say like hey just go here and figure out look at it you know look it up here and then you can find it yeah definitely it's uh it really is like if you're trying to get into the FGC or you want to uh, understand like what's going on with uh, the scene as a whole. I mean, especially going on Twitter, you got uh, you got Alex Baez, you got your Chrysitarians, you got your low tier guys, you got your guilties. Like it's really it's so scattered. And then you know it, you're not gonna just find concise FGC stuff because I mean like everyone else, everyone's into various things. But if you're central focus is just fgc is really hard to, it's going to take a couple of months i'd say at least three to four months to get the bearings of it on social media especially like with uh twitter yeah exactly i mean that's why we kind of created the site because it's like like i think being in the fgc and being on twitter you know for so long it's like yeah we feel like oh yeah we know everybody we have all the info but then you know, just coming from a newcomer's perspective, it's like, I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely true, man. Definitely true. Uh, ha have you guys, uh, how has it been like since you started your, you know, your site and everything? How active has it been? Uh... Um, it's been really good, actually. Uh, like, I know when we first started, I was like excited that there was like three or four people like looking at the site. I'm like, oh, this is so cool because it's like, this is kind of like the first time I've done like a like a full on website, mm -hmm. and then like nowadays, like uh, you know, it has grown a lot since then. Like uh, we recently got um, uh, a writer to help us a, l a little bit. His name's mm -hmm. Eli, mm -hmm. and he's been a great help. Like he's been writing these great articles for um, like people who are kind of like uh, uh, I guess not as well known in the FGC, but they're doing like some awesome stuff. And that has brought a lot of traffic to our site. So, um, you know, I'm finally seeing like, uh, cause we look at our analytics and now I'm like, when I check the analytics page, I see there's actually people on the site while I'm looking at it, as opposed to it's like, oh, it's always just zero or it's one cause it's me <laughs> looking at the website. So it's been really, really cool seeing it grow. And um, I also have been seeing like people here and there like kind of mention us. So like, it just feels really nice that like uh, people are kind of recognizing us and mm -hmm. Like, you know, like people kind of see us as a good resource and some, some, uh, as a, you know, reliable or like, you know, so, so just some place that people can trust to go. Definitely. Definitely. How, how big is the staff for, for top tier GG? Like how many people? I guess technically it's just three of us. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Before it was just me and, uh, me and Gabe. So like, I was like basically writing all the articles for like a couple months. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think he wrote a review because uh, he he did our, our review on, on like a hitbox that the that wooden hitbox that came out from mm -hmm. uh, from hitbox and uh, and then I think just this past couple weeks ago we got Eli to start helping us out so um, but it's been a lot easier with Eli on the board oh man <laughs> I was like so stressed out when I was like I'm at work and I'm like oh, we need to put something up on the site today <laughs> but it's like nothing's going up and it's like oh no yeah nothing's going up today <laughs> but he's been he's been a great help now cool 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 um um I also want to ask you like what got you into to gaming especially into fighting games and what draws you into it like what it, what about fighting games and gaming as a whole has you passionate about it uh, well, I mean, I've been playing games since I was a kid, so I just love video games and still play them now. Like, uh, even my wife kind of gets annoyed. It's like, ah, oh, stop playing those games. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, I just love video games. Um, in terms of fighting games, like, I would play with my brother a lot, actually. Um, like, we would play, like, CVS 2 at Third Strike all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like back even before, like, just when it was only SRK forums, like, we'd, we'd go in there and, like, look up the like the combos and random videos that people would put up and we're like, Oh, this is so cool. And that's when I learned the, the Sakura, like show, 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 like <laughs> combo. I'm like, Oh, I got to practice this. <laughs> so, you know, like I've been playing since then. And, um, 
I think, but I wasn't actually like really competitive until about like Street Fighter Four, mm-hmm. uh, but not exactly Street Fighter Four. Like, like there was just like this one day that I was uh, playing Blaze Blue actually, Blaze Blue uh, Calamity Trigger, mm-hmm. and I was just like, man, I actually really like fighting games. I should buy a stick. <laughs> it's just like that thought just like randomly came to me. Yeah. And then I I just I got one of the the SE stick, you know, the, the very the dinky tiny Mad Cats one. Yeah. And then like I was like playing with that and I was just trying to get good at Blaze Blue. And then I went to my very first tournament. Uh I think it was like the, one of the first SoCal regionals or something or mm-hmm. or it might have been West Coast Warzone actually, but over here. Um and I entered my first Blaze Blue tournament and like I you know I met all the guys and like uh, I saw that people had like the tournament edition sticks. Like, man, this sticks so much better than mine. <laughs> I need to get this one. So yeah, and then ever since then, it just I just kept going with it. And I think, um, you know, I think it was just that competitive spirit, and just seeing all these people that, that like love fighting games, just enjoying it together, and just the hype atmosphere. And I think that's kind of what drew me in uh, a lot. You know, like the whole hype behind it. Like everyone's getting all crazy and just like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, you know. <laughs> so yeah no no i i dig it man i dig it i i you know i really feel like um you know i, I kind of feel like you and i are from the same generation like growing up playing fighting games and that was the thing especially in the 90s like fighting games just took over the scene and then you know come to 2000 especially here in america like it really started to fall off until the resurrection of street fighter with street fighter 4 you know i remember back then uh seeing the trailers for it back in 2008 and then when it dropped in 2008 into going into 2009 i was like oh man this is serious so i remember <laughs> it was uh reason enough for me to um that's when i actually got my first xbox 360 i got it back in 2009 i said like, i got nice. that i got the my mad cats because i mean back then you, if you're looking for a fight stick mad cats was the name yeah they were the the game <laughs> yeah. so you know i got my mad cats and i i was you know, going to tournaments when I was going to school at uh, Shamana University out here, and then we'd had tournaments over at uh, University of Hawaii, has tournaments at HBU or Hawaii Pacific University, and then um, it was just the scene, like it was exploding, and it just seems like, um, yeah, it was like lightning in a bottle, and that bottle hasn't let the lightning go, it's just been going yeah. ever since, so. Yeah, it's definitely a great time to be a fighting game fan. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, but you know, one of the other things I want to ask you is like, with uh, when you know, speaking of fighting games and Street Fighter and whatnot, like, do you play anything else outside of it? Like, do you play uh, Tekken, Soul Calibur, King of Fighters, or anything? Oh yeah, like, man, I, I kind of call myself like a fighting game floozy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I play like almost everything. Yeah. Like, like I've been trying to get. In, I right now I've played like Soul Calibur, uh, for Tekken, mm-hmm. Street Fighter. Blaze Blue, uh, well, not Blaze Blue as much these days, but more Guilty Gear, uh, Unist. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm excited to try out Grand Blue when it comes out. Oh, Grand and, Blue is so good, man. Yeah, it looks really nice. Uh, and I've been dabbling in Samurai Showdown a little bit. Uh, but yeah, like, like I, I I play way too many games. <laughs> it's like, it's like, like I should just stick to one and just like get really good at it. But mm-hmm. it's like I don't know. It's just I, I don't know. I just want to try everything. You know, it's just it's just so fun. Yeah, like what you know, one of the things I did was, um, you know, this uh, and shout out to PDP and Vitrix, but for flying me out to E3 uh, back in June of this year, I actually got to go and play a lot of uh, Grand Blue, and it was that game is good. It nice. is so good. Like I, I'm hyped for that. Yeah, I'm super excited for all of those. So yeah, I mean, like, and I, I think it helps, you know, that like I'm. We have the website too, so maybe I can just try them out. And like, I think I think for me, uh, I I, I kind of analyze like maybe why I keep doing that. It's like I think I just like the, the fast learning curve of like learning a new game, mm-hmm. and then like when it gets to like the deep and harder stuff, I'm like, yeah, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it might be my own fault that uh, I just kind of keep jumping around. But but I think that learning process for me is like really fun. Just. Yeah. Uh, like especially from the zero to like intermediate levels, like those are probably the most fun I I have for most fighting games at least. Definitely, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, um, 
No, I, I play all of the games you listed. I play all of those, but like my go-to game, and it's been the same game since 1998, is King of Fires 98. Oh, yes. Nice. I'm so excited for 15. I can't wait to see what it looks like. What, what did you think of uh, King of Fires 14? I feel like, given that it came out in the same year as Street Fighter V, I like the fact that uh, King of Fires 14 had a complete roster, over 50 characters. The only thing I think that hurt it was the fact that the graphics initially turned people off, even though they fixed it. It was just like the the idea was already implanted. In yeah, there. that had a bad impression. You know, it's like it's kind of like what happened to MVCI. It's like once they they just pre didn't present it right, and mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Like I I was I was actually really big on King of Fighters thirteen. Like yes. like I made that game hard. Like when when it was at its prime. And I still miss playing that game. I kind of want to go back and play it with some of the some of my friends. Like we're, we, I keep joking. It's like, dude, we need to go back and play this game again. We need to revive <laughs> this game. But in terms of fourteen, like I was a little disappointed with it. I don't know. It's just maybe not the style that I liked in per particular. But uh, I think the the graphics kind of like played into that too. So like I'm so I'm hopeful because like how oh, Samurai Showdown came out. Man, that game's beautiful. You know. Yeah. So I have a feeling that, you know, they kind of learned a lot from 14 and, um, you know, applied that to Sam's show and now they'll reapply those new, you know, like lessons that they learned for 15. So I think 15 is going to be, a, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a good one this time. Yeah. You know, and I'm hoping um, if it's going to stay in a 3D graphics style, I think if they're going to go for a, a look, I think they should take pages from um, Fighting EX Lair because I think... If you were to compare King of Fighters 14, Street Fighter 5, and Fighting EX Layer, EX Layer for a team for a game made by a team of about four or five people, that game looks good. Like, <laughs> graphically is impressive, and you know uh, one of the things I've noticed, and it's it's something to see, especially with Terry being announced for Smash. But it, it's amazing how a lot of people don't realize that SNK is actually back. Like they've been. <laughs> Dude, yeah. They've been slowly, like, I remember when they went bankrupt uh, in the beginning, I think it was 2000, and they were, they merged with uh, Playmore in 2001. Yeah. And, like, slowly, you know, they sold off their IPs, but they slowly been buying them back little by little. And it's like King of Fighters 13, well, 12, then 13 was the start of them getting their footing back. And then with Samurai Showdown, with all the other stuff that they've been doing, I'm like, SNK is back. And I think. That's uh, enough for Capcom to finally stop, you know, coasting and be serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, yeah, I definitely feel you about SNK because I was I was so sad when like all they were putting out was like Pachico games and like ah, <laughs> like you see like this like trailer for like a like King of Fighters. Oh, are they coming out with a new King of Fighters? No, nope, Pachinko game. <laughs> <laughs> but they're back now. Like like you know, I think that 15, 15 announcement was like super hype. You know, I think that especially gonna, they learned their lesson from the reveal from 14. They're not mm -hmm. going to reveal it too early this time. Yeah. You know, they're going to make it look really polished before they uh, drop that first trailer. You know, and that's one of the things, too, is like when you play a King of Fires game, the combat is really deep. Like, it's a steep learning. It's easy to get into. It's always been easy to get into, but the, diff the, the, the learning curve has always been sharp. And, you know, when I go back, I still, I play uh, Final Fantasy, uh, not Final Fantasy, but uh, King of Fighters. 13 on steam and i'm still like it's been almost a decade i'm still learning new things yeah dude i mean the thing is i think uh when people were like the mass fgc got into king of fighters because mm -hmm. i mean i can't say that i know much about the older versions but when i watch like like the previous king of fighters like it seems like it's more simpler you know like they don't have the you know crazy hd combos and i think that's what like intimidated people mm -hmm. so I think that's what they try to do with like 14 to kind of go in between to like ha still have the like crazy combo possibilities, but at the same time not be as crazy. Mm -hmm. So like I think that's kind of like what I, I remember back when like 13 dropped and people said, "Oh, this game's too hard," and everyone just kept saying that over and over again. But I don't think really people are really turned off by that you know prospect exactly because it's like you know we're kind of turning around to say like, "Oh, when games get too easy, they get boring now," you know. So I don't know. It's 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 hard to tell. It's like exactly why, like you know, what turns people off from games or whatnot, whatnot. But yeah. but I'm excited to see like what they change up for for 15 at least. So because I, I have to say, like I'm I wasn't a fan of the max mode uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of locking away the ex you know attacks 
in, behind that, I was like, oh, come on, let me let me do EX moves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, you know, and, and hopefully with, you know, the announcement King of Fires uh, 15 and with everything that SNK is doing and with uh, Terry being in Smash, which would be the first oh, time. Man. That's going to be the first time that Terry, Ken, and Ryu have all been in the same fighting game in long... CBS, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dang. And, um, you know, and I, I feel like since Tekken started doing all the crossover game, like crossover guest characters, I'm thinking it will. I'll say this: like some of my insiders at Capcom have uh, revealed to me that there is something, some talks in the works between Tech, uh, Bandai Namco, um, SNK, and Capcom. So, oh dang! Fingers crossed that there Three is. Way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, I'm not sure if, it's, if if they do this, if it's well, oh, and Sega. So it may, oh, dang. it may be something along the lines of. Uh, if they do another game, it may include, you know, Versa Fighter and Tekken and KOF and all of them all in one. I'm like, okay, so then if that's the case, <laughs> we don't need to call it SVC3, uh, uh, CBS3. We can just call it something else. Like, that would be, that, I mean, it'd be the first time we've gotten all the characters from all these games that we grew up with uh, in one fighting game. So I'd be hyped to see that. That'd be insane. I don't know how they're going to do that, but I don't know. I'm crossing my fingers too then. So, uh, what has been, um, you know, your experience, you know, being involved in the FTC and, and going to tournaments and whatnot? Like, what has been your experience so far? Uh, I mean, it's been mostly positive. I, you know, like I mentioned before, it was like really life changing for me personally, mm -hmm. you know, because I used to be like the, like very shy and like, you know, I would just like stay in and like not really talk. I would, you know, I'd have a hard time like talking to people, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I think, like, through the FGC, I was able to help, you know, kind of open up. Because, you know, like, the online is, like, really, sh you know, crap, you know? It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of talk about that, like, right now about, like, you know, the netcode and stuff. But, you, you know, back then, you know, when I was, like, still figuring it out, like, you know, they didn't even have online play available. And, like, you know, arcades were, like, the place to go to play. So, you know, so you have to, you know be in person and you know when you're there it's like you know you did eventually have to like talk to somebody you know mm -hmm. so like I, you know i think that kind of helped expose me to like go out and get out of my comfort zone and also like with get, getting your ass beat you know, it's like <laughs> oh i want to i want to do better and win so like i think that combination at least for me like helped me to like grow a lot personally so like you know when i got more involved with the scene um you know like a lot of myself came out and you know i had to you know battle a lot of things you know about myself it's like you know like you know things like depression or like mm. things like uh like how low self-esteem like those are things i like battled with and like i kind of like externalized it through myself you know growing in like my like fi fighting game prowess so mm. you know it i don't know that, that kind of dual journey for me like it was like something that's really special to me and I, I really don't think I could be where I am today without that experience. So, yeah, it was, so it was super positive for me. And, you know, th that's why I want to, like, bring that experience to other people. It's, like, that journey of, like, self-discipline and growth was, like, my journey and, like, what happened for me. And at, at, at the same time, like, uh, I was able to get a huge group of, like, really good friends through it, too. You know, it's, like, uh, I run, I roll through a lot with, like, what we call the fighting games at UCI crew. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I, I used to go to UC Irvine and, um, we started a fighting game club there and we used to like jack like trailers and like empty classrooms and to like set up setups and just start <laughs> playing each other. And then it grew into an actual club there. So like, uh, those are the, those are the people that are like, uh, you know, ride or die homies for me. So, and couldn't have done it without, you know, fighting games. So definitely definitely man that's that's awesome and you know that's that's the the amazing thing i love about uh the gaming and the ftc is like you know everyone's got like a that origin story and, and it's it's really always a personal story of, of growth you know and i i really i dig that i definitely did that i mean because i from even for me like you know you know i grew up and I'm, i still am you know even in my 30s like i'm a more of a shy person even though i have a on-camera persona where it's like <laughs> before i hit record i'm like 
Oh God, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> All right, hi. <laughs> you know? but, but, you know, like going to the arcade scenes back in the days, back in the 90s, and then going competing in various tournaments to, you know, hosting tournaments have really helped me, you know, grow and develop and, and come out of my shell a little bit. And it's, you know, I, I really owe that to fighting games because it's the one style of game, you know, with the exception of shooters as well, where, you're constantly improving. You always learn something new. I mean, we, you can play shooting games or, or MOBAs or whatever, as, you know, as much as you want, but fighting games, I mean, you can go back and play fighting games from 20 years ago and you're still learning something new. So it's a, it's a constantly, I, I'd like to correlate fighting games to self growth and, 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 and evolution because they definitely teach that teach discipline. They teach self growth and, um, it's it's something that sticks with you. You can apply it to other aspects of your life. So, yeah, dude, I definitely feel that. You know, and, that, and that's like the, what I want to share with people too. You know, especially in this age where it's like a lot of people are kind of like more separated and like more online and just kind of you know like I, I want to be able to encourage people to like you know, still go to locals. Like I, I feel like um, I know that there was that huge debate about like uh, like whether we should you know care about locals or online more mm -hmm. and then uh you know there's like that side where it's like oh no we need better net code because blah 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 and then like it's like no forget that because like you know we, we have our locals anyway but um you know like, i probably i'd like to get your thoughts on it too but like okay. you know I, I really agree with the whole uh we definitely need better net code and the reason being why it's like um like I thought about it and it's like, you know, so say we have like this huge pool of people that are, you know, that we consider the FGC mm -hmm. and it's only, it's only so big because like, you know, like say like 1% of that is like, like the people who go to locals and imagine if that, you know, pool just got 10 times bigger then we'd have like such so many more people coming to locals because of that, you know, it's like how many people just, just watch or just play super casually and they're like, no, that tournament environment's too intimidating for me. Mm -hmm. But if we can increase that pool, you know, that, the amount of people that actually like playing then you know when they if they have a great online experience and like they're like oh man you know like i'm playing all these players you know how do i get to the next level you know it's like i see all these people streaming and it's like man they're getting a lot of glory and like you know like it's like this this is cool it's like people are like cheering for them it's like i want to do that like you know <laughs> so i know yeah so i feel i feel like they'll work hand in hand you know just like having good online means like you know way more people and which means like more people at the locals too definitely definitely uh you know and, and i'm on the same boat as you guys I, I definitely do think that we do need better net code when it comes to a lot of the games that well all, all the fighting games that we're playing because you know for a lot of us that aren't able to go to a local or we don't have one near us and you know we'd like to play fighting games online with other people so having uh, good net code is, is very essential, but at the same time, for those of us who do have locals nearby, I think it is very imperative that we do support them and we attend those and help grow, or grow the scene and be more than just, oh, I'm going to go to this major or I'm going to compete at EVO or, or, you know, whatever term is like the, the Tokyo Game Show tournament that re just recently happened. And yeah, I heard about the controversy there. Oh, but, yeah. But, but, you know, it's like if you have the means to go to your local and support it do so get that practice in because there's nothing like playing in person against somebody else locally versus playing online because you don't have the variable the input delay or you know the lag or anything like that and i i think for a lot of people who only play online it throws them off when they go to tournaments and they're not used to playing other people because you gotta immerse yourself in the environment i mean you've got the crowd there yeah it's the, a lot more stress yeah yeah you know and, and if you go to locals more frequently you're able to iron out those kinks and get rid of that that nervousness and it preps you for the tournament scene so i think you know like you said it, both are very very imperative yeah definitely and i know you touched on like uh people that don't have like locals nearby and mm -hmm. like that's another major reason why we started the website actually because um you know like if god willing like you know we were able to capture like every single local that's like you know in the you know united states at least so far mm -hmm. you know then like people can kind of take a look at the map and say man there's like none nearby me or like there's only like so many mm -hmm. so it's like we want to help encourage people to fill in like where the gaps are you know so like say there's like you know 100 people are 
in like some kind of town and like there's like zero locals there and it's like but we know there's like a hundred players around here but I don't, I don't know how that would come about or not but mm -hmm. you know it's like if there's like a spot that's missing then it's like man you know like maybe if i start one it'll you know people will start coming so like that's, that's part of the reason why i wanted to, we set up like a little map on the website to show because mm -hmm. it's like that it helps visualize to say like hey there's a bunch around here there's a bunch around here but there's like none here yeah. and we're hoping maybe someone picks up the slack and just says hey you know like i want to be that spot i want to take up this area you know yeah. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it presents options and, and having availability and the, the freedom of choice right there to create something because that's the other thing, supply and demand. If there's a demand for it, and there's nothing nearby, you can create the solution to that demand and then boom, there you go. There's another scene right there. That, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's a great, that, that's, a, that's a beautiful uh, way of putting it, man. I, I, I dig it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I think a lot of people, that they might be like uh, intimidated to like start one or something. And it's like, you could just start one, I don't know, at your house, you know, just like yeah. two, three people and then just kind of grow it from there. Because uh, we have another uh, like part of our website where we're, where we highlight events mm -hmm. that people are running and we like to ask them a question about like oh you know what made you start this event or how did it start about and you know like most of the ones that we, we get at least the ones that i've talked to so far it's always like oh yeah you know we had you know we saw that there's nothing around here you know i got a couple friends you know just to come to my garage and it's like oh man no, no there's too many people <laughs> so now we have to find a venue and then it's like you know it just grows from there and like it just takes the dedication of a couple people to just make that happen yeah definitely it definitely does um you know and, and switching gears to um a couple of my last couple questions i have for you like i, I want to get your idea well your, your perspective on like the current state of fighting games and and gaming in general in comparison to previous generations like do you feel like the influence of esports is affecting the casual and professional feature of the fgc uh i mean that's a huge question but i mean i think just what comes to mind is that um i feel like a lot of players like are looking to cash in sooner than later in a, mm -hmm. in a sense so like uh I, I can sense that like at least from when i started playing like there wasn't a sense of like oh i'm gonna do this so i could like start making money mm -hmm. uh although i think only the people that like kept winning tournaments all the time <laughs> like i'm gonna win i'm gonna win the tournament so i could get the you know the, the the pot or whatever but like you know but that's like you know a couple that's like 50 bucks or something you know like i can buy dinner with that or whatever but I, I feel like these days um like a lot of players are look, like looking to get on the fast track to get like sponsorships and things like that and i think we're stuck kind of in that growing pain where like we're not quite big enough for it to be like like i guess quote unquote real you know mm -hmm. like where people can make a living and there's like an ecosystem around it like we're still building that ecosystem but at the same time i think it's good because like we're kind of you know we're, we're push, pushing the needle like we like we want to try to get to a professional level and you know we're we're building the groundwork and um i appreciate the way that the fighting games community is doing it now because we're still keeping it grassroots mm -hmm. you know we, we we were really i think we're smart that uh we kind of avoided letting like corporations kind of like you know dictate you know how it's gonna go mm. because i feel like if that happened like the fgc would die really fast yeah. you know so you know, say like a game like uh, I know I know Fortnite is humongous right now, right? So like, um, but you know what happens when like you know, uh, Epic you know does like something where like nobody likes the game anymore, everyone just like drops off all of a sudden, and then it's like they go on to the next game. But I don't know, because I think with like fighting games, it's like because we're so grassroots, we just like love the the genre as a whole. It's like it's not it's gonna be hard to kill it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like the, you know, the growth of it is kind of slow. So I think there's just a lot of impatience right now. Yeah. I mean, and I, I definitely see it too. Like with a lot of the uh, FTC pro players that I've met uh, both in person and some, you know, some I've interviewed and some I've talked to uh, before, it, it definitely does seem like there is this emphasis on, I want to make a living off of this, or I want to make money out of it. 
And I think there is a bit of a divide between, you know, the grassroots people who actually enjoy and love it. And I think this is something we're seeing with uh, a lot of different genres, even including streaming and content creation, where you have people who legitimately enjoy it. And then you've got another sex of people that are only in it because, hey, I can make money doing it. And I think uh, with the growing pains, especially in the FTC and, and its venture into the esports, I think you know we're going to go through that probably for a couple more years before it it stabilizes out i don't think we're going to have a drop off point the way that you know i can see it happening with epic eventually with fortnite i think people are going to get tired of that i mean we're already seeing that with what uh apex legends that's starting to die off quickly and i'm actually kind of happy about that because <laughs> as a titanfall 2 fan where were you motherfuckers when titanfall uh. 2 was shit now y'all want to play Apex Legends, oh, Legends and that's just like a, a watered down version of Titanfall <laughs> 2 without the Yeah, next. man, give us the robots, man. Right? <laughs> Those robots are sick. Right? It was so influential, even like Call of Duty started switching up their <laughs> to use jetpacks and everything. I'm just saying, that's that's my little rant. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It's it's hard because like, and because we're all in the thick of it right now. You know, it's like we don't know what the future looks like, but I think, but I think right now, I think we're. I, I can say that we're in a good place. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's a lot of cool things happening. You know, like um, I don't think uh, the influence of esports is really going to ever get to us because like we care so much about our authenticity and we just care so much about who we are as a scene mm -hmm. that like you know that can't really get corrupted you know and you know if there's gonna be some kind of like big entity that comes in to do like some kind of esports type stuff like um you know it's gonna have to go through us you know yeah and you know like i can see something you know a big shift happening when like riot gets into the game mm -hmm. like i don't know what's gonna look like after that point but like i can I don't know. We'll have to see what happens with that because that's like a big question mark for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but overall, I think we're doing good. You know, it's like, you know, we're not letting the money get to our heads all the time. Yeah. But, you know, it's only certain individuals that kind of like shine and just kind of make it look kind of crazy sometimes. But, you know, we're pretty grounded. You know, like we, we know what we want. And, uh, you know, as long as we, you know, stay, stick to our, you know, our values and stick to what we know we want then you know it's gonna it's gonna be all right you know it's just gonna take some time it's just gonna take more time than other uh scenes mm -hmm. but i think like we just gotta be patient and just say like hey you know like yeah these scenes have the big money right now but you know but we got our you know we got what we got and we're gonna grow like organically it's gonna be strong and we're gonna be stable definitely definitely you know, I'm winding down to the last three questions I have for you. The next one, uh, see if we can have some fun with it. Okay. Because I'm curious to get your opinion. Tier lists. How, oh, snap. How, um, let, let me make sure <laughs> I, I work. Uh, you're going to be politically correct here. <laughs> I, I have to be, but you know, I, I'm known for not being PC, but here it okay. goes. Um, Shoot. Do you think tier lists are the be all end all i play street fighter 5 and i play cody who is someone who has been shitted on for since he came out in five <laughs> but what's funny is a lot of people i've played that are top tier especially out here in hawaii i've just run roughshod through them with cody i think personally and so i can put give a point of reference sure. to this question i think tier lists are cool to know but i don't think the tier list equate into the the equation or factor into the equation of the, the person's skill level and ability to adapt on the fly to the situations that they're playing in yeah i mean i think tier list is a definitely a very complicated question you know because there's always that like two levels mm -hmm. uh working at the same time it's like player skill you know how good they are with the character you know like their matchup knowledge you know it's like you know you could be a kuma and you know who's considered top tier but you face off against some fang and you've never played a fang before yeah. and then you're gonna get on that high fight reel where you just get blown up you know <laughs> <laughs> so i mean there's so many factors but i think you know uh on paper yeah technically you can kind of see like yeah these characters are top tier these aren't and um i think to a degree you know like 
most people can be, you know, quote unquote, correct, you know, in, in terms of that, because it's like, um, you know, intuitively, you can, you can kind of see like, oh, yeah, these characters have like, some really powerful tools, you know, like, yeah. you know, good, good example would be Genjiro, you know, yeah. Samurai Shodan, Vanilla, it's like, um, you know, obviously, he was super good. He was definitely the best character, hands yeah. down, you know, and the fact that we can say that, and everybody will agree with that, you know, that's, you know, that's, you know, merit to say that, you know, tier lists, you know, can provide some great information. And, but I think it's just like, um, depends on the person who sees them, you know, it's like some people, they just want to, you know, if I, if I jumped into a brand new game, mm -hmm. you know, like, like an older game or something that's, you know, the tier lists are pretty well established, you know, if I want to jump back into third strike, I'm gonna pick up Chun Li, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, why, why not, you know, why do I want to suffer, you know, if I just want to, you know, play the game at a, you know, high level, or if I want to just like beat some scrubs up or something like that, or, you know, <laughs> but it depends on what you want, you know, like, yeah. so I think you use the tier list to say, okay, what's my goal with this tier list? It's like, oh, I want to pick, you know, low tier so I can prove that they're not actually that bad, you know, I, I like that challenge, you know, or it's like, I want to, you know, do the Rock Lee, you know, from Naruto, and just like, put some weights on and see if I could beat all the top tier people with with this character and say, ha, look, look at me beat all y'all with my low tier character, <laughs> you know? And at the same time, you can kind of see it's like, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's depends on what you want out of the game, you know? It's like, and then same, same deal. It's like, if you see like nobody plays this one character, maybe it could be that one specialist where it's like, man, this guy is super good with this character. Did we like sleep on this character, you know? Yeah. So yeah, there's, it, yeah. So I think that's what it comes down to me for in terms of tier, tier list. It's like, what's your goal? You know, mm -hmm. and and I feel like you know, um, I, I mean, I had an idea with our uh, site. Um, I don't know if I should be talking about it or not, but like maybe like, way down the line when we can like, like afford server space and you know more server space, it's like I wanted to have an idea where it's like we'd aggregate like everyone's tier list together to try to make like a community tier list. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's like way down the line, so that way it's like we could kind of see, oh, this is like what the community is consensus is about what this tier list is so like yeah i mean that's kind of like my thoughts about like what tier lists are and it's it's kind of fun you know to kind of kind of shit say that yeah i think this character is good this guy needs buffs or whatever um and yeah that's kind of how i how i see tier lists really man i you know and it's um one of those things where you if you, you have the idea for it just you know work towards it you know i could definitely see that, that that's a great idea and i can see you guys definitely executing on that down the road awesome yeah so hopefully we'll, we'll get there one day soon <laughs> <laughs> so um are there any uh projects that top tier gg is working on that you can speak on or anything in the works that you'd like to promote yeah uh i mean like i know i know for me i, I can't speak for my partner since and I, I you know he's not here but like I know for me personally, we want to have like a event calendar so that it's like really easy to see like what majors are coming up and what events are coming up. You know, if there's like a game release or like some patch that's like been announced or something. Mm -hmm. So that way people can kind of plan for like, you know, oh, I want to go to this major and then that major or something like that. Or it's like, I want to watch this stream and that stream. Because I know a lot of times like, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of times where it's like, you know, you'll see like results for something. It's, oh, I didn't know that happened already. Or it's like, you know, then that, you have to go back and watch the VODs or something. But uh, so that's one thing, you know, we're working on. Um, yeah. And other than that, uh, nothing too major that I can think of. So like, I don't know, it's, it's not, not, not the hugest revelation, <laughs> but like, we're just kind of working slowly at it. I think our main mission right now is to just, uh, you know, give a regular uh like feed for news and uh also like capture as many of the locals as possible it's, at least that's my number one goal is to tr try to get as many local events onto there as possible so you know that's kind of a reason why i came on here too it's like i want people to submit their locals or like help update the information because like um, when we first started the site i basically scoured all the internet to try to add as many as i can and i found like maybe like two or three hundred by myself and it's like man this is so much work <laughs> so i definitely need a lot of the community's help to be able to like you know flesh it out and um i know recently i got a lot of help from oh, i forgot the guy's name on twitter um 
he he usually does like this whole like positive FGC Wednesday kind of tweets. Mm -hmm. Really cool, actually. Um, I can't remember the name, but uh, so he he's I think he's from the UK and like he kind of tweeted a bunch of guys from the UK to help uh, flesh out some of the uh, locals from there. And I got a flood of like events after that. So I'm like, oh man, thank you so much. Like you know, it's like I can't I can't do that without help from like guys like that. You know. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, and also, like, the, the last question I have for you is, like, what advice would you, you know, give to someone looking to either get into fighting games or someone who's currently playing and either wants to play competitively or get better? Or, actually, I'll split this into two different questions. All right. So we'll go with that first. And then the second question will be uh, how, you know, if a person wants to start or support their local, what advice would you give? So those would be two different questions. Sure, sure. Uh, I guess in terms of like transitioning from casual to competitive, I'd say like a big thing would be like to find someone to play with mm -hmm. that wants to go on that journey with you, like find a rival, quote unquote. Because I think that um, like it's hard if you want to just try to do it by yourself. Because mm -hmm. like it's like you you need other people that like have a similar goal with you to travel with you mm -hmm. otherwise you know like when when times get tough or like um you know you feel like there's no one to like no challenge to overcome then i think it's just gonna either gets boring or just like, way too overwhelming so i think that's that's a huge thing um so that's why i think like locals are really important because mm -hmm. it's like you can find someone that's like close to your level that you say, okay, yeah, dude, let's level up, you know, let's, uh, you know, try to, you know, rise, rise up the ranks, or at least the group of people can, like, help you, like, get, give you advice, you know, like, show you what, you know, how to level up in your own gameplay and things like that, so I, I think that's why uh, that's important. Okay, okay, and um, as far as uh, the second question, you know, going with uh, people wanting to either start their own locals or uh, support their locals like what advice would you give for that uh, for for the, the uh, audience listening? um because I, I know a lot of people that they say that um, you know they want to be able to go but you know like sometimes you know it's like real life happens or you know like because uh, you know or like work is tough or it's like you know sometimes like locals go away deep into the night and it's like I got work the next morning <laughs> I can't I can't go yeah so but I think like one thing you can do is like they're just like ah, man like you know besides from going i think um it's either i'd say for the people that do go maybe try to help bring some someone new mm -hmm. you know just try, just try to show them what, what the scene's all about that way they could kind of like see it for themselves and experience it and kind of like uh, see if that's something that they'd like so I, I think that would help but kind of like make make the scene grow bigger because i know uh my buddy uh lewis uh offcast like uh he what is that brought a friend who knows nothing about fighting games with him to evo mm -hmm. and like you know he's just kind of watching and just seeing what's going on and then like after that weekend like i don't Lewis didn't even talk to this guy, but then he just went off and bought Tekken 7 on his own because he says, damn, I want to learn this game now because it's just so hype. You know, it's like all these people are so into it and, you know, they see the passion and the and the love for the game. And, you know, like, I think just inviting people to just come experience it, it's like really good. So I think you can do that at the local level too and just kind of see how people like really like it. And, you know, a lot of the FGC folk, you know, we're such a lot of good people in the FGC. So I think once they meet, see how, Cool people are it's like yeah this is a good group group of people it's like i'd, I'd want to come out to these and and i think for people who like aren't able to go as regularly um i guess just do your best to, like just promote it and then like uh like maybe like help them set up like match arenas or you know like help them like uh you know just like non maybe like tournament stuff um maybe like give some feedback or some ideas for how to bring more people in because i know for me at least um you know th there's a lot of people that i've talked to who kind of like don't like the whole local tournament experience because like you know for for people who like just kind of going to have fun like you know when once the tournament starts it's just like a, 
all the stations turn into tournament mode and it's like you know say if you go like one and two then you're like okay you know like do i want to stick around just to watch you know there's nobody playing casuals everyone's like focusing on their matches and then like all i can do is like watch now so like they kind of feel like oh i might as well leave or something so i feel like there could be some kind of way to like make it uh, a better experience overall, like in terms of that, you know, like, you know, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot more innovation when it comes to like local tournaments or like mm -hmm. local events, you know, like instead of just like sit down and play, I think we can like do things like, I don't know, like stuff with, like food or like other kind of games or like, I don't know, something to mix like the casual crowd plus the competitive crowd and things like that. Um, I know I talked to Lewis about this too, uh, like, cause he was saying like how it, it might be cool if there's like some kind of event where like, you know, say like the Mortal Kombat, like, uh, cosplayers, or like Mortal Kombat, like voice actors came and then and it would bring in like a bunch of people who are like, oh yeah, that sounds really cool. And it's, there's like a bunch of beer and like, you know, a lot of, a lot of good food or something and some partying or whatever. And then like, there's like, they can kind of experience with a lot of you know what the FGC is like. Maybe they, they'll have like a tournament there as well, and then they kind of like display it and make it a, like a spectacle, or whatever. So I don't know, just like ideas like that. I feel like there's a lot of possibility for innovation. Definitely, definitely. And is there anything you want to leave the audience with before we go? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess like you know, if, uh, if if you're not really into the competitive scene, you know, like maybe try visiting like a tournament or something. Um, you know, you, you could check out our website to see if there's like a local nearby you. Um, and, uh, let me see, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess if you ever want, uh, you know, help with any of that kind of stuff, you know, you can feel free to hit me up. Like, uh, my, my individual Twitter is at choice sauce 85, C O C H O Y S A U C E 85. So you could contact me if you, if you're interested in doing something. You know, like I'm, I'm big on wanting to help the FGC grow and, you know, not just like just numbers, but like make it like a experience, you know, fun experience for any kind of person that wants to go, you know, mm -hmm. like, so like, you know, lots of ideas. And I think, you know, experimentation is like worth doing and things like that, you know, so I don't know, I guess I'll, I'll just leave it off with that. Definitely. Definitely. And, um, Final question, because I lied about the last one. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> this is the last question. Get the trick one on me. <laughs> Did you have fun? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, this is definitely a lot of fun. You know? <laughs> yeah, awesome, man. Awesome. And uh, I'll leave links to uh, all the social media outlets and uh, for the website down below. And definitely, man, I, I enjoyed having you on here. We got to have you back on again. Uh, this is a blast. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And, um, you know, anyone, any of you out in the audience that are looking, definitely go check out uh, Henry on both his top tier GG uh, Twitter as well as on his personal as well. If you need any help, uh, if you're deciding to throw attorney or if you need help with uh, your scene and with your locals, then definitely reach out to him. That's a great wealth of resources right there. And uh, just support local. I, I think that's the the central theme of this this podcast and of both of our beliefs is you need to support local. It's good going to majors, but support your local scene too. And even if you can't go, then promote it. You know that's that's definitely imperative. And with this podcast, you'll be able to catch this on uh, multiple outlets. It's available also on youtubecom slash Nova, Also on twitter.com or Twitter tv slash Miguel yeah. Casanova. I had to catch myself on that one. But it's also available in audio format on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, coming soon to Sirius XM Radio, and Podcast One. So with that being said, this is the Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova. I had the honor of having Henry Choi from Top Tier GG on this episode. And we will see you guys on the next one. <laughs> hey, did you enjoy this episode of the Casanova Podcast? Well, I'm sure you did. And since you did and you're wondering where else you can find it, you can find it on every podcasting outlet. Yes, it includes Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Launchpad DM by Podcast One, and so much more. And the only thing I ask of you is if you truly enjoyed it, even if you didn't enjoy it, 
please leave a rating and tell us what you thought of it, what you like, what you didn't like, and everything in between. And also, if you're looking for video formats of this podcast and many more, you'll be able to find them on youtube.com slash Mikel Casanova, as well as on twitch.tv slash Mikel Casanova, and new episodes every single Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, that being said, this is Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber. I am signing out. You guys have a great one.